You ready to put all that you've learned over the last three days into practice? You ready to turn it and put this into a game plan? Take the next two hours to create the best year of your professional careers. Who's ready to do that? Say aye. aye. Well, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna go pretty fast and I have some slides, you could take some pictures, but as I go through, we're gonna come, go through some goals, we're gonna go through some outcomes that you want to achieve to, so you can create your game plan. We're gonna go through some strategies to do that, some accountability systems that you need to put in place in order to achieve what you want to achieve. This is gonna be serious. It's going to be focused. This is work. Now, this is gonna be a first draft as you get this information, a first draft. And for some of you, it's just gonna be a roadmap that you're gonna go have to fill in the blanks later because you're too overwhelmed in the moment. Make sure you get this so you can go back one, to create a game plan for you. Two, to create a game plan for your leaders. Three, to get, create a game plan for your entire team. So let's start with goals and outcomes. The goals and outcomes that you want, I want you to think specifically over the next 12 months, maybe 13 months. From now to January 1st, 2020, now through the end of 2019, your goals that you have, let's start with income. I want you to think about a reasonable goal for your income for 2019. What would that goal be? Write it down, please. Just come up with a number, whatever that number is for you, write that number down on a piece of paper for your income. You got it? And as you write it down, what I want all of you to do is to double that number. Double that number. And why? Here's the answer. Why not? Why not you? Why not 2019? Why not get past your limiting beliefs? Why not walk away from your bad habits? Why not surround yourself with excellence? Why not? Why not create a plan to do something so outrageous, so unreasonable, more than anybody in your family's ever dreamed maybe? <laughs> something crazy. What would Magic Johnson write on that piece of paper? If this was his only option, he couldn't do any other business. What would his number look like? Why not you? He's just another person. Decide what you're going to do when it comes to your income. Next is habits. The habits are going to create your future. Make no mistakes. You are a byproduct of your habits. And there's no such thing as getting rid of a habit. You replace one habit with another habit. We are creatures of, of habit. So most of the time, your bad habits, all you got to do is look at the other side of the coin and find the good side of it. And because you're an expert at the bad side of it, you're already probably pretty knowledgeable on the good side of it. You just have to make a decision to go in a different direction. So what are your habits when it comes to action or lack of action? Sometimes people procrastinate. You know why? Fear. You know why? Negative programming. You know why? Self-worth issues. You can decide that you're gonna take action. You're gonna be a person of action. You're gonna be a person that takes the step. A person that says yes, tells the world and then figures it out. A person that is not going to be limited to having to be prepared before they even take the action. They're gonna take action because they know that most of the learning is in the doing. When they think about doing something, they will take the step first before preparing for months and months and months to take the step. Create a habit of do it now, do it now. You have an idea, do it now. Should you make a call, make it now. Should you do a presentation, do it now. 
Could you do a Zoom? Do it now. Could you invite somebody to your convention? Do it now. It, it, it might not even ever need to go on your to-do list if you just do it now. As soon as the first moment it crosses your mind, get it over with. Get it done. Surround yourself with people that will reinforce that action part of your mentality because you have it in other aspects of your life. There's other aspects of your life that when it comes up, you just do it because you want to. Just decide you want to do the actions necessary to support your business. Next habit, consistency. Create a baseline for your business, a baseline that no matter what, every single day, you're going to do these few simple things. You can decide to do more of those things some days, maybe, than others. A lot more on some days if you're in a campaign or something. But at a minimum, let me give you some things to think about as far as consistent daily action. Number one, you need to use your product daily and publicly whenever it's appropriate. If you have a service that's a little bit more challenging, but with a product, if you have a product and you can use it publicly, use it publicly every day. Number two, you need to share your product with someone every single day, however they do it in your company. Number three, you need to share your opportunity with another person that could get benefit from it every single day, at least one. You could do a hundred one day, but make sure you at least do one the next day. A foundation. That's the third. Fourth is that you invite someone to your next company event or most powerful women in network marketing or GoPro Recruiting Mastery, you invite somebody to that next event every day. Your company convention, invite one person every day. You can invite 20 people one day, but make sure the next day is at least one. It's your baseline. And the fifth thing that you can do every day is engage in personal growth. Take a few minutes to read, take a few minutes to listen, take a few minutes to think, take a few minutes to reflect, take a few minutes to learn. Those five things as a baseline. Now you can add to that. If you have a team, stay in communication with your leaders. At least in a simple way, consistently. You'll lose team members if you don't talk to them for a week or two. Find a way to stay in consistency. So that's a baseline, a baseline of activity that will give you a foundation. Consistency is going to be one of the habits that change your life. Action will do it, but action followed by nothing, followed by action, followed by nothing, will not give you momentum, will not give you growth. Every time you stop, you'll lose all the benefit that you got from taking the action in the first place. So consistency as a habit, if your habit has been inconsistency like mine was for so many years, try to find a baseline. Next habit is discipline. Decide to be a person of discipline. Decide to be a person that I'm okay with discipline if it's my idea. Right, I mean, and if that's okay, if that's what you need, make it your idea. Employ yourself. Don't let somebody else give you the discipline that you need in order to be able to do what you need to do. Give it to yourself. That's okay. If that's how you're wired, it's how I'm wired. I'm wired against structured authority. Everything, it, speed limit. I have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> And not because, just because they said, well, I'm like, well, how come? I could do a little more. Doesn't matter what it is. I go against that. So I have to, I have to discipline myself because then I won't rebel against myself. I know this about me. So whatever that is to create a discipline for you. So you become known as a person that follows through, that does what they say they're going to do. Maybe they set crazy goals and they don't hit them all. Fine. But they've got a level of bedrock. 
that people can count on. Next habit is focus. For the next 12 months, decide to focus on the outcomes that you're trying to accomplish, the goals that you're trying to accomplish, and nothing else. For just 2019, nothing else. Set everything else aside for one year and change your life. Maybe sacrifice some of your time with some of your hobbies. Some, anything that's not pushing you in the direction of your dream. Maybe for that year, push it aside. Just for this year. I'm not saying forever. But to help you accomplish what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. You know what is the thief of true accomplishment in life? You want to you know what it is? A little to-do list. I could be a millionaire, but I had to go get the laundry done. I had to go grocery shopping. I had to change the oil, so tomorrow I'll do it. I had to get the car washed, so tomorrow I'll start. I had to, you know, this thing happened and that thing happened, so next week I'll get going. It, and this little to-do list will rob you of your potential. It will literally grab your dreams and yank them right out of your heart. These little to-do lists that nobody cares. Nobody is ever going to look back and say, wow, laundry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Find a way to put those little duties into the smallest box possible for 12 months. 12 months of laser focus. 12 months not looking to the right or to the left. 12 months not looking at other opportunities. 12 months not allowing yourself to be surrounded by negative people. 12 months. For once in your life, like, like Matt Morris talked about when he did that 90-day planning, for once... He gave it 100%. Damien Fire came to me. He's making, I think, $3 million a year. His wife, independently, is making about $3 million a year. He came to me five years ago, six years ago. He was making three, 4000 a month. And he heard me talk about 100%, all in, total focus. And he looked to his friend who was in his team, he said, have we ever done 100%? And a friend said, nope. He said, let's do it. And he did it for 90 days. And his check went from $4,000 a month in 90 days to nine, over $90,000 in 90 days. And it wasn't just a blip. Look what he's doing now. Combined household income, over $6 million U.S. Why? Because he did all he could, all he could, everything he had in the tank, total focus, no distractions for 90 days. You want to change your life? Sometimes that's what's required. Walking away from ordinary, doing something outrageous. Next, grit. It's going to be times when it's tough, when there's going to be times when it's not fun. There's going to be times when it's pure work. Where there's going to be times when you're rebuilding and you get up before anybody gets up and you go to bed before, after everybody goes to bed. People are saying, no, your team's not working. Nobody's coming to, you, coming to your events with you. Nobody's showing up for your meetings. And it's pure work. Nobody's watching. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody's recognizing your sacrifice. That's the days that it's hard. When everything falls apart, when everything goes smash, when it's a true winter. And there's going to be a winter season sometime in the next 12 months. And there's going to become, a, there's going to be a choice for each of you to make. Are you going to be defined by that situation or are you going to define the situation? That's the choice. We all get hit with it. I heard a quote 30 years ago. It said, you can tell the size of the man by the size of the problem it takes to get him down. Whoa. Every time I had a bad day, I said, is this all, all, I, all the bigger I am? Somebody said a mean thing about me and I'm going to fall into a fetal position? No. Put my shoulders back, put my chest out, put my chin up, put my big boy pants on and go out there and do it again. 
I don't need to please everybody. I don't need to be everybody's most popular person. I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. That's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up over not being the best leader in the world if I don't lead a person to success that says they want to and they blame me because of their lack of performance. I'm not going to accept that anymore. I'm going to work with the willing. And when it, there's a, it's time for me to become gritty, I'm going to become gritty. I'm not going to be defined by some petty little bullshit. I'm not going to do it. Grit. Sticking with it. Deciding you're bigger than the situation. Not letting your past determine your future. Not letting your brand up to this point determine what your brand's going to be moving forward. Not letting what other people think of you define you. Not letting the response of your prospects define your opportunity. Get gritty when nobody's watching, when nobody's patting you on the back. Decide you're going anyway. You're going to hit this wall. You're going to hit this winter. And you've got to decide what you're going to do with, with it. Because guess what comes after every winter? Spring. Don't let the winter kill you. Don't let the winter steal from your business because you didn't have enough grit to get through it. Get resourceful. Get tough. And get through it. When you do, everything will change. Become a great problem solver. That's a habit. That's a habit. Did you know that? It's a habit to say, problem shows up. Give me the facts. Let me figure it out. Let me solve the problem. Okay, let's move on to the next one. That's a habit. Guess what the habit most people have? Oh, I have a problem. Who can I give it to? I would like to give my problem to somebody. Can I give it to customer service? Can I give it to my upline? Maybe I'll give it to my downline. I have this problem. I don't want to have it. Their habit is to give it away to somebody else instead of solve it. It was my habit for years. I'd blame, I could blame anybody for anything and I could justify it. It's not my fault. Once I developed the habit of becoming independent, unstoppable, give me the problem, I can figure this out and I can figure it out fast. And I can figure it out better than anybody else. I heard in this business that the bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. I was like, huh, all right, fine, bring it. There's nobody in your market. There's no business in your market. There's no leadership. There's no distributors. There's no nothing. Some people say that's a problem. I can't build when there's no support. I learned to flip that story on its head and say, guess what? There's nobody in the market. We get to get it all. Let's go put the infrastructure together. Let's put the communication together. Let's find the leaders. Let's build a customer gathering system in this city. Let's figure out a way to make it happen. Let's see how many people we're going to bring from this city to the company convention. Solve the problem instead of handing it to somebody else. That's a habit. What's your goal when it comes to habits? Determine what that is for you. A good start is the opposite side of your bad habits, whatever your bad habit is. If you're late all the time, decide you're going to be early. No, I'm not talking to you. I can talk to her. Are you sloppy all the time? Decide for one year you're going to be sharp. Decide for one year you're going to be photo ready, camera ready when you walk out like you're a celebrity. For one year, you're gonna try not to get caught by TMZ with an ugly picture. For one year, you're gonna be the sharpest person in the room for one year. On your budget, however you wanna do it, just decide. If that's a habit that's important to you, make, it, make that decision. Now, next, next goal and outcome is customers. How many customers do you want to attract personally and team? What is your goal to create a customer gathering culture? Some of you are excellent at customers. You're not so good at, 
adding distributors. Some of you are excellent at distributors and not so good at adding customers. You might want to create some systems inside of your organization. If it's important to you to create a customer gathering outcome, goal, determine what that is and put it to paper. Next is recruiting. I'm going to be pretty aggressive when it comes to this point and let you know the people that got you here, the best thing you can do for your people that your existing team for 2019, and this is going to offend some of you, this is going to freak some of you out. The best thing you can do for your existing team is spend no more than 20% of your total time with them in all of 2019. Love them, encourage them, look for hungry people, look for potential influencers that you can mentor, but you want to go to the next level, guess what's required? You got to bring in the class of 2019. You got to spend 80% of your time bringing in 20 people in 30 days to get your year kicked off, then maybe rest a few months and then do it again and then rest a few months and then do it again. You want to totally separate yourself from the crowd? Spend 80% of your time building a new team. You know what, what's going to inspire your existing team? A new team. Yeah. You building a new team. Yeah. Quit trying to squeeze blood out of a rock. <laughs> Jeff or Bertie said it best. It's easier to give birth than it is to raise the dead. Let go of the potential. I know you love these people. I know you feel responsible. But guess what? It's their life. If they don't want to step up, let them go. 80% of your time. You want to go to the next level? That's what's required. And you know why people stay with their existing group? It's not because they love them. And it's not because they want to support them. And it's not because they've fallen in love with potential. Because it's easier to talk to people who are already in your business than it is to talk to prospects. Oh, it's so comfortable and fun to hang out and talk. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, you have no idea. I'm even more excited than you. Oh, did you hear about the new product? Oh, that's amazing. That's spectacular. Oh, what about the convention? Oh, I'm so excited. What are you going to wear? <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, blah, 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 blah. Here's the secret. You're already signed up. <laughs> Come on. Bring in the class of 2019. Set a goal to bring in the class of 2019. Set a personal recruiting goal for you for this year. Set a personal recruiting goal for you. Write down a number. What's a number? Now listen to me. What is a number of personal recruits that is in alignment with your income goal? What is the number of personal recruits that's in alignment with your income goal? Your stretch one, not your first one. How many are we talking about? I know it's not fun. I'm an introverted person. Recruiting is not fun. Taking somebody who knows nothing about what you're doing, maybe he's going to judge you and try to distract them from their daily life and get them to focus on what you're doing, that's not fun. I never loved recruiting. I loved the other side. When they came in, I loved working with the team. I loved developing a leader. I loved the camaraderie. I loved the friendship. I loved the journey, but the first part I didn't like. Here's one of the biggest lies in business life. Only do what you love. Such a lie. Only do what you love and you will never work another day in your life. That is such nonsense. Do you think an Olympic athlete only does what they love? Do you think a concert piano player only does what they love. No! Six hours of practice a day, you think that that's love? They, they love every minute of it? Do you think an Olympic athlete loves getting up bef before the sun rises? Do you think they love ice baths? Do you think they love injuries? Do you think they love constant training when nobody's watching and nobody's cheering? But it's required. So why did I decide to recruit when I didn't feel like it? Because it's required. To have somebody to work with, which I was pretty good at, I had to do the thing that I was uncomfortable with, which was bring some new people in. So get past your fear, get past your ego. 
I don't need to recruit anybody else. Well, who cares about you? (laughs) What if this person is praying for you? You've got a gift. This person is praying for somebody to show up and please rescue me from this miserable situation. I don't want to work in this job anymore. I don't want to be unappreciated anymore. I don't want to be paid 10% of my worth anymore, but I'm doing it because I don't know any other options and I'm scared to start a traditional business. I don't have the money. I don't have the idea. I don't know if I have the chops. I certainly don't have the time. And you've got it. All all you got to do, Max, is decide to get out of your own ego and get out of your own selfishness and go share it. Care enough about somebody else to do what's uncomfortable for you. Change their life. What's your, what's your recruiting goal? Next, what's your rank advancement goal? What's your outcome? What, what rank are you going to get to by the end of 2019? What's your rank advancement goal for the core rank of your, of your leaders within your organization? What's the highest rank you want to see in how many different lines of sponsorship? What is that rank goal? For some of you, it might be to requalify at a level that you qualified at previously and haven't been qualified at. That's fine. That's not a failure. That's a victory. It's progress. Nobody goes straight up. What's your rank advancement goal? Next is skills. What skills are you going to develop in the next 12 months to help you achieve all these goals? We talked about the seven fundamental skills yesterday. We talked about leadership skills. What are you going to do? What skills do you need to get better at? What do you, where do you suck and you got to get better? Figure out what that is. Write it down and say, this year, I'm going to get excellent at this skill. Whatever it happens to be. Get your mentorship wherever you need to get your information and decide you're going to make it happen. Skill development, the seven fundamental skills, social media skills, and leadership skills. Those are the big bucket items that you need to pay attention to in 2019. Don't get stuck in personal development. I love what Fraser talked about, that two-legged thing, action and personal development and action and personal development. That's totally true. Learn, put it into practice. 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 But decide by the end of 2019, you're going to be higher skilled individual than when you started it. Understand? All right, next. Number seven, leadership development, influencer development within your team. Decide what you would call an influencer. The five characteristics is what I use for an influencer. But decide how many people you're going to grow as influencers within your organization over the course of the next 12 months. Make it a serious focus. Because here's what I got to tell you. If you are in momentum, it's hard to focus on influencer development. When you're in decline, it's hard to focus on influencer development. If you're plateaued, it's hard to focus on influencer development. There's always something else to do. And it's always some shiny penny. What I've got to tell you is influencer development needs to be baked into your goals and a major part of your priority, influencer development. If you're not growing that, your, your core business is not growing. It's all an illusion. So grow that, set that as a goal. Next, culture. Decide what you, you want your group to be known for. By the end of 2019, Here's what culture is. It's, this is the way we do things. What do you want your group to be known for? Do you want them to be known for speed, velocity? Do you want them to be known for heart? Do you want them to be known as people who attend all conventions? Do you want them to be known as people who really are passionate about the product? Do you want them to be known as dressing sharp or dressing sloppy? What do you want? Decide what you want your group to be known for and put things in motion in order to be able to make that real. 
Now, in addition to culture, geographical expansion. Sometimes this happens by accident. Sometimes it happens by design. Let's say you live in um, Dallas, Texas. Hey, Dallas. And in Dallas, Texas, you're building a good, strong local team, which is fantastic. It's amazing. Here's what I would encourage you to do. Create a strategy to develop a business in Fort Worth. To create another strategy to develop a business in Houston and to develop a business in Austin and develop a business in San Antonio and ultimately capture the market in Texas. Because can you do that if you build enough of a foundation in Dallas? The answer is, of course. The smart, forward-thinking people. What did Magic Johnson do in Florida with his health organization? He went and spoke to 300 churches. Why? To grow his core businesses in Florida, up and down Florida. He had his strategy. So what's your strategy to grow? I would start with a three-city area. Wherever your market is, pick two cities around it and start revolving through those cities until you get three cities strong. And then maybe add a couple, spend a little less time with those three and add a couple and start doing that again. Start expanding your business. But here's what I got to tell you. Five years from today, 70% of your business should be outside of your home market. If it's all in your hometown, you have a shallow business. You got to expand it. If you're around the world, your business needs to get around the world too. And you can do that from wherever you are. Geographical expansion should be a goal. Number 10, destination event attendance. Your, your company convention attendance. How many people are you going to bring to your company convention? How many people are you going to bring to the most powerful women in network marketing? How many people are you going to bring to go pro recruiting mastery? Pick a number. Whatever that number is, whatever it is, double that number. Because all of you are playing small when it comes to bringing people to an event. If there's any secret sauce, most people don't believe me. I look them right in the eye. I've been doing this 30 years. I look them right in the eye and I tell them the secret. And they go, yeah, really cool, interesting. No, anything, you know, they start talking about other stuff. I'm like, I just told you. I just told you where you make all your money. If you did nothing else, if you only had one skill that you could do in order to be able to make money, that skill that I would have you develop is dragging people to events, getting more people to attend events. That starts with setting a goal and really an aggressive goal. Something outrageous, more than your upline is even thinking. Get aggressive.